So hello and welcome back to Natsu Reviews, I am Natsu, I am back again with Walkman EXE, and we are going to talk about episode 2 of volume 4 of Ruby. So, if you have not seen it, go to Rooster Teeth's YouTube or website and watch freaking episode 2 so that you don't get spoilers, and then come back here and check this out. So... <laughs> All right, I'm going to let you take over on this one, and uh, we'll go through it, because I talked the majority of last time, so All right. I'd like to balance um, things out. Oh God, you get, you handed me the one episode I don't like either. Okay, so <laughs> this is what I like to call the Weiss episode. and um, It was very much the Weiss episode, yeah. If no one has ever heard me rant, which I'm guessing none of you have, because nobody knows I exist, uh, if anyone's ever heard my <laughs> rants, which are very far-fetched on the deep depths of the internet... Um, Anyone who knows me and my, my love of Ruby knows that I absolutely hate Weiss. Nothing against Kara. I love Kara. I just don't like Weiss as a character. Um, but this time I... around, we get to see a little bit more of her house. And legit, my first comment as she's... She, she, she gets greeted by her butler, Klein, which um, you mentioned the voice actor whose name I can't remember. Cause J. Michael Tatum. J. Michael Tatum. I'm, also wondering, I'm, I'm also wondering if Klein is just the all-around butler or is he also her cake butler? Anybody remember Ruby Chibi? Cake Butler. Cake Butler. Um, <laughs> but he, he uh, so he, we, we get to see a bit of him. Not too much, though, because she immediately goes wandering off down the deep halls of Schnee Manor, as I've always lovingly called it. Um, which the first comment I made <laughs> when I saw her walking through this place is on the marble statue her father has of a king taijitsu and i said to myself what kind of narcissistic son of a bitch needs a king taijitsu statue in his foyer and when we meet him we go oh that's the <laughs> oh, guy. that guy yeah um that guy would yeah yeah no so jacques jacques schnee <laughs> which schnee, which still sorry. bothers me like the, the whole schnee family bothers me like weiss is the only one who's who's got a german name and i'm like that's good and then her brother's whitley which is english ish her father's jacques which is french and her sister is I winter not, which is like, i don't like all right i don't like anybody in her family except for winter like winter's the only cool one yeah as far as no I'm for sure I, I i get behind that winter is also i after meeting after meeting whitley and jacques i can understand why their mother has a drinking problem yep <laughs> Like I, all you need to do is see the family portrait, <laughs> and you totally understand the entire family the dynamic. The garage right again. There. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. Um, I, I I've said I said this to you before a while ago that her mother has to have the name Olga, otherwise I'm gonna just lose it. Like her mother has to be <laughs> Olga Schnee. Olga <laughs> Schnee. She has to be. Otherwise, I'm gonna lose my mind. But. So that there, that, that that's where we get the uh, German from. Yes, from Olga? yes, I, it has to be Olga Schnee. Um uh, and there must be a mountain involved. <laughs> but Whitley, I mean, it is Atlas. You know, uh, who, who voices Whitley? By the way, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked into right. that. I'm so sorry. Look at, looking this up right now. <laughs> Quick to IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> totally professional. Totally professional. We've we've got this shit on lock. All right, Whitley Schnee. Uh, the here best go, part is. The best part is I'm not editing any of that out. <laughs> no, that's that's totally fine. I I hear you. Uh, Whitley. Schnee, I want them to know that we're voiced unprepared. By, uh, Howard Wang. I'm hoping I'm saying the last name right. I'm probably not. I don't care. That's hilarious to me. I just had a Ruby moment where I'm like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> damn you, Ruby Rose, uh, and your uncontrollable laughter for the previous episode. Um, but basically, like. I saw Whitley for the first time. Like he's he's rather polite and forthcoming as a as a as a gentleman. But the first moment I saw him, I'm like, "You're a little shit, aren't you?" He's a dick. <laughs> I'm like that. Kid, that kid is a dick. You, you, I already you, know you're this. You're a closet douchebag. You you hide it well, oh. but I could sense it off you. I, I was known in high school for my one ability, which is called the asshole sensor. I could sense when other people were closeted like complete assholes. The new perfume coming out from the Schnee line, Ode to Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, I, like literally, I, my, one of my exes introduced me to one of her friends and was like, hey, this is my friend Tyler. And I'm like, you're an asshole, aren't you? She's like, dude! I'm like, no, no, he knows. He knows. He knows. 
I was right. I feel good. I feel good, though. I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way. Yes, I'm an asshole, and no, I don't care. All right, then. Moving on. Uh, yeah. We get to... We get, to, we get to listen to fuck. Whitley go on about, oh, sister this, sister that. And it's like, God, just. <laughs> I grew the entire time. And it's all me, 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 me shit. I don't hate winter anymore, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like the disdain dripping in his voice is very, very, very well masked. And they're like, oh, he's arguing with somebody. And Okay, I can't be the only one. When they said that her father was arguing with somebody, I immediately was like, I know who that is. I know exactly who he's yelling at. I know who the guest is. It turns out I was very, very correct. Yeah, no, I, I, I feel you. I was just like, it's like, father's arguing with someone. I'm like, it's James. It's James. It's James. totally it's James. James. It's James. It's James, everybody. That's the twist. Who else do we know from Atlas? Uh... Flint Cole? <laughs> Surprise plot twist. He's arguing with Penny. <laughs> <laughs> She's an AI that runs everything. No, uh, but, um, <laughs> no he's arguing she with James. Lied, and no. James has got like a wicked five o'clock shadow. Like he's. Yeah, he does. He has not been getting any sleep. Or at least honestly, if he has, he's honestly, been drinking. My running food. joke. My running joke was, uh, upon seeing, uh, upon seeing him with, uh, Five O'Clock Shadow, was like, I wonder if he's been drinking as much as Crow has this entire time. I wouldn't doubt it. Because that's kind of what it looked like. I was like, well. He just, he, does, he just stands up and stumbles. Hello, Weiss! Uh, General Ironwood, are you okay? Fine. <laughs> I was just joining your mother Fine. for a drink. <laughs> he's got the good shit. <laughs> He thinks I came over here to talk politics with him, but no, I'm just raiding his liquor cabinet. (laughs) Your mom showed me where you keep the good champagne. (laughs) I I was joining your mother for drinks earlier. Good God, that woman could put her liquor away. Where does it even go? (laughs) But no, we, we meet her father and immediately it's just like, he's not an asshole. I fucking hate that guy. He's just like, he's the epitome of businessman corporate america he's the opinion yeah, he, of corporate ma- america businessman he just he gives no shits he has a company meek, to run meek, and he doesn't have time to manage the family meek meet jacques schnee or as i like to call him the wolf of atlas yeah for real <laughs> or uh i guess uh goldman sachs 2.0 <laughs> Gold, goldman the goldman sachs, sachs of remnant goldman sachs of remnant yeah that's exactly what exactly. he is yes um I made the joke earlier too, Fucking like um, hate him the, so much. The leader of the White Fang is going to be like a pink panther faunus. <laughs> if the theme does not play every time he comes up, like, like <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> serious. This this needs to like he if that if that p- turns out to be the case, if the pink panther theme does not play behind him every time he's in a scene, I will be very disappointed. Like, I mean, I need it to be like Duke Devlin and Yu Gi Oh Bridge <laughs> kind of shit. Okay. No, like that, 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 I, I, I'm going to be very disappointed if that's not the case. Like, if if the Pink Panther is not the leader of the White Fang, like I'll be. Very that would disappointed. be hilarious, though. But it suddenly everything makes sense. It's the Pink Panther. <laughs> uh, but no, like we we get to meet her family, and then like we we get to meet her family long enough to disdain all of them, and then immediately it's back to Ruby again. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. We get a moment with uh, we get a moment right. With, we get a moment uh, with Klein, Klein, and we realize yeah. he's not the he he is the best butler in the world. No, my favorite thing, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna talk a bit about reaction videos real quick. My favorite thing from this has been watching other people uh, doing reactions to episode two, <laughs> and so many people are like, "Does he have multiple personalities? He looks kind of evil. Like his eyes are changing." Okay, first and foremost, yes, his eyes changed, and that was a little weird. But no, he wasn't, he wasn't doing multiple personalities. He was putting on kind of a performance in order to cheer Weiss up. And that's why I liked him in this frigid fucking house. Because, ah, these people are the, like, the ice kings and queens, apparently. It's nice to know that there's at least one warm hearted motherfucker that's in this mansion. Because we need to break up the frickin' monotony. So do you think but like, I love, Jacques I love has like Weiss. a basement where he just keeps the Iron Throne? 
I mean, we do have a Tyrion. It wouldn't. We do have a Tyrion in this season. I would not be surprised at all if we just found out that Jacques is really uh, a Lannister <laughs> and uh, the worst Lannister in history. Just saying. It wouldn't surprise me either. Uh, can we can we poison him already? That's all I'm saying. Make all the just... winter is coming jokes. Uh, winter I is coming those were... to dinner. <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> Winter is coming to hang out. <laughs> I don't know. I, that's the other thing, though. Because they are all back in Atlas, I would like it if we actually got some more moments between Winter and Weiss. Yeah. Like, there should be those. Like, eventually, Weiss is going to run away from home and go meet up with Winter or something like that. Like, I, I want to see that. I am so sick and tired of the idea that she's going to be trapped in that house. She needs to get out of there because... Being at Beacon was such a good thing for Weiss. Yeah. She's a hoity-toity little punk, but uh, being around I the rest it. of the Ruby crew... Oh, she's a bitch, straight <laughs> out. But, um, I mean, being around everyone that she was around at Beacon was good for her. And you can... Just going off of her personality and seeing how everyone else in the al- in the house acts... You can definitely see that she's had a softening up of her attitude and that she has grown and she's definitely changed. So, you know, it, it's good. It's good that we had that to be able to see that dynamic and see how far she's come as opposed to where she was started when we first met her. Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, hated her so much in the beginning. Still do. Now I'm like, Still do. I, no, I hated her so much in the beginning and now I can actually tolerate her. So. Uh, then we get to go. Back, then we finally get to go back to Ruby, which is oh. Ruby's life. Ruby's life. We get back to Team Ranger, and uh, yeah, everything goes wrong. Everything. No. All right. All right. The build up. The build up was great. I love any time we could talk about Jean's family because that's priceless. With his seven sisters, <laughs> my and sisters and I went camping. there every year. <laughs> it was like. Uh, yeah, they kept trying to make pig, uh, they kept trying to give me pigtails, but I'm more of a warrior's wolf tail kind of guy. Isn't that just a ponytail? I stand by what I said. <laughs> Best freaking dynamic! Like, anytime, like, I, I, I love Pyrrha so much, but at this moment, I am shipping Ruby and John so freaking hard. I'm, I'll never. Uh, but before we get to, before Zay we get would to have, ships. They, they would have wonderful children. Before we get to ships, uh, we need to talk about um, right before that build up, though, we get the scene where Ruby is hearing Pyrrha's voice, and I, like, I mean, I, I, we find out uh, we find out later why she's hearing it, but I, part of me likes to think that there is some side effects to the silver eyes that will be at work. In that is four. that is literally ro- Rooster Teeth like scratching and clawing at my soul. Please stop! Please stop! I don't! I don't need this. I don't, I don't. I didn't need these feelings. <laughs> Why are you making me feel these feelings, Rooster Teeth? Uh, but the, yeah, no. I, uh, I, I, I like the little build-up they get. We talk about John's family again, and then we get to the village where everything goes wrong. Oh my god! It's uh, and it was such a nice and tender and warm moment. And then we got to the village, and then uh, <laughs> remember that no, 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 best metaphor ever. Remember that march they had in Mulan where they're talking about a girl worth fighting for. That is the uh, mo- that is the moment. <laughs> that is the moment right there. They climb the mountain, Jesus. burn down village. It's Jesus. it's awful. It's uh, uh all right. Um, uh, Ren had the most grown up kind of reaction, like to the whole thing. He he walks forward. He drops his pack. He goes to check on people. Uh, they find a hunter that's still alive. It turns out bandits raided the village, and then afterwards, Grim. And Ren's just whole reaction on checking on this guy and then checking to see if there are any more survivors. And then while everybody's busy trying to figure out what to do, he's like, the guy died. We got to move on because it is not safe here. And so I, while while people may think that's cold, Ren is keeping his team in mind. OK, yay, team dad. <laughs> and team dad. He's very much team dad. I mean, look, look at after they lost Pira he's going to be a lot more protective of his team. And so if he has to be cold to be protective, that's what he'll choose to do. Wait, so, so but can we make the joke now that we have Ren as team dad and Jean as team mom? Can we make that joke now? Are we allowed to? No, no, we're not. 
Not at all. All right. So moving on from there, uh, the the other thing that threw me was when they saw the uh, the hoof print or the footprint. symbol. I, the symbol I, I, I of one of the grim. Grim. I think it was a literally a marked symbol to let people know uh, to stay away. Like, because Nora or it could and have Ren, been the ba- or it could have been the symbol of the bandits. But Nora and Rin, there was definitely some recognition there. Yeah, that's why I think it's this. It might be the symbol of the bandits because they recognized it. They stood there for a good bit, staring at it, and there was definitely some reaction on their faces. Like, that they... and there was definitely a moment. There was definitely a moment where Nora looked at Rin with. Uh, you know, after after the recognition had settled in, where it definitely felt like Rin was getting quite a bit upset, and Nora was just giving him the look of "I'm here for you if you need me," kind of. Yeah. Uh, the, the that kind of vibe. That's what I got from it. I could be completely wrong, and Rooster Teeth could be laughing at me right now if they if anyone from them ever listens to us. I don't know. Maybe I'll they tag will. Them on Twitter, we'll find out. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the um. The, the recognition that washed across their faces was crazy. Ah, garage again. I swear to God, if this becomes a thing, I told them. <laughs> I told them not while I was recording. Whatever. Okay, but after that we get to go back to the mansion for a bit. It's not very long. Yeah. It's just long enough to kind of... Cement how much of a dick Jacques is. And how much basically. this is going to just suck as a volume for Weiss. But yeah, uh, basically, it's it's another point of he has children simply to use them for the benefit of his company. Is is what it felt like. Didn't think moment. Rooster Teeth could wound you more. How's that twist of the knife feel? Does it feel good? Uh, the other thing, the other thing that you could definitely tell from Weiss's growth, I feel like she would have immediately said yes in the beginning, and this time she turned around and was like, "Are you asking me or are you telling me?" Yeah, you know that kind of a moment. And that's where you can definitely see that Weiss is growing up and becoming a bit more independent from her family, which I think is a very good thing. Yeah, honestly. And yeah, um, we've already talked about all the rest of it with Klein afterwards. Yeah, we kind of yeah, covered that before because we they, they they move it in segments, so it's hard to get track of what goes on when and where. But I think we can all move towards the ending of it. Yeah, where. Once again, we get another one of these scenes where it's dark, and then there's a few floating lights going around, and we hear Pierre's voice once again. And I'm I'm still cemented on the uh, idea that the silver eyes do have some this pretty is hard rebound. This is the cry-worthy ending. Where uh, she wakes up and notices that Jean is gone. Everybody else is sleeping soundly, but Jean is up. So she wanders around for a bit. Uh, I guess I should say Ruby. Ruby wanders around for a bit. Oh my god, okay, really quickly, I want to talk about that scene where she's, like, walking through the forest and she's about to discover John, and, like, the lighting that was going on in the forest and the and the fireflies that were all over the place, that was fucking brilliant. Like, the animation was so good, it was such high quality. I don't want to use the word on point, mostly because I'm an old guy, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. It was really fucking crisp and clean, and it just felt natural it just enhanced the uh the beauty of everything that was going on right it there. was on and, point oh. i can say it i can say it okay it was he can point. say it because he's younger i'm i'm an old fogey i shouldn't say on point i'm about five years away from get off my lawn you whippersnappers but um no i'm nowhere near that level um the old man in ruby <laughs> the old man in ruby <laughs> yeah, who just who just runs all the shops and plays all the grim. <laughs> but yeah, um, so th- that was just an amazing scene. And then, of course, we get to Jean training and we see Pira and it's a recording. And then Rooster Teeth makes me cry like a baby. Bastards. You, why you bastards. do you do this to us? I'd like to comment, why? though, on... on the, why the, do you torment me so? I, I would like to comment, though, on the improvement that John's made. Because when we first saw him, mm. he was awful. Just completely awful as a fighter, uh, let alone a leader. And yet, in this scene, he literally sends, like, what? Like, a, a what would you say? A five-foot, six-foot wave of wind from a single slash? And he does it multiple oh, times. Yeah. He's really improved his strength and technique since the first volume. By I want to see bounds. how. I want to see how well he's been able to work with his semblance. Like at some point, 
Uh, I want to see what he's able to do with his aura and uh, what his semblance is. I don't know specifically what Jean's semblance is. That wasn't, I don't think that was ever made clear. I don't think healing is actually a factor of his semblance. I think it has more to do with his aura. Yeah, I think it's so. I'd like to actually see. I'd like to actually see what his semblance in is because uh, his his aura, like Pira said at the very beginning, that he had a lot of aura, and like apparently his aura outclasses Pira. So if he continues on with the training videos, as I like to call them. Uh, with Pira Maybe. and we'll starts see. working his semblance. I I would love to see what he becomes. It'd be it'd be awesome. Uh, I just want to see everybody as adults like years later and how badass they've become. That's what it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Jean, Jean if, will become. Crow. Jean has become Crow. Yes, <laughs> he's just wandering around drinking. Uh, <laughs> He's also he's also sort of become Raven, like he just knocked up Ruby and left her, you know, whatever. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Maybe I actually the, sh- the I ship feel like... that I actually ship uh, just for the sake of it is actually Jean and Yang because I find oh, it really? hilarious because <laughs> I feel like Yang already made the comment the first time that she's like, you know, she's like, oh, I, it's like there's a lot of boys here. I don't think Dad would approve. And she's like, oh, well, I approve. So I get the feeling like if she has a kid with Jean, I'll be like, can you tell me about my dad? Uh, which one? Oh my god! <laughs> That's horrible! I, I don't know, I'd find it funny. Because I, 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 I feel like it would just be Yang's way of messing with her, her son or daughter. We don't know. Uh, she'd just be like, you know, she'd know it would be Jean, but she just doesn't want to say anything. It's totally Jean's. Oh, uh, that'd be <laughs> awesome, though. What can you say about Dad? He sure loves his pumpkin peach cereal. <laughs> just like you! <laughs> What 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 is that ship called? Like if you there, ship there, there actually Yang has not John. been a, a name for it yet. I don't think. But um. Oh really? That's sad. Uh, I'll come up with one though. I, Next I think, video, I I'll think have pink, one. I think Pink Lotus is the one that is Ren and Nora. I just call them pancakes. Yeah. Because also, still my favorite line in, in Ruby is uh, from Volume Two. Art art library supposed to be for reading. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so we've covered uh, volume two. I'm sorry that we got a little distracted towards the end, but dude, it's th- that the scene. There is no way I'm going to break down crying on this episode, you know, breakdown. <laughs> I'm not reliving that. I still cry every time I've seen it, and I've seen it five times. No that's breakdowns not on the doing... breakdown. No breakdowns on the breakdown. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's generally the reason why I haven't done any uh, reaction videos to this, uh, is because... <laughs> By the time I'd actually start recording it, I've already seen it. Like, I don't like waiting and setting up everything. I just want to get to it and see it. And I'm like, when I see it, I do have thoughts that I want to put forward. But, I mean, at the same time... Blubbering like a child. (laughs) Blubbering like, well, no, that's not so bad. That's actually good for a reaction video. You want to have... uh, You want to see someone in a reaction video reacting kind of in a similar way to maybe how you did i think a lot of it is just i want to see somebody cry just as much as i did and uh that's that's why i love uh murder of birds stuff because he gets very emotional about this and it's a lot of the same emotions that i have so shout out to murder of birds if you've not checked him out please do he does a lot of really good ruby content that you want to check out and there are giveaways for ruby stuff now so definitely check all that that is it for episode two of uh, Ruby, volume four, and we'll be back 